test. Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to a Cocoa Vanilla Studio process video. This time we are using Storyteller, which is a collaborative project between Tracy Reed and our lovely Zoe. And this beautiful collection perfectly matched my graduation photos from college. And so I absolutely had to reach for it to scrap these four photos of my graduation day. Now, one of the photos is from inside the auditorium when I was actually graduating, and the other three are with my family and myself outside of the auditorium. Now, when you're graduating from college, generally speaking, they don't want you to have phones out, which makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of decorum and rules and things that you have to follow uh, when you're graduating. And so I didn't get any pictures really from my perspective on the floor because I had left my phone with my kids and my mom uh, up in the crowd. And I was uh, sitting there the entire time thinking, oh, I wish I had my phone to just get like one shot of my perspective from the floor of the just the the huge ceremony and the stage and the crowd because it was such a surreal experience to finally be able to uh, have that moment of I've finished this I've, I've accomplished something really important and exciting and wanting to remember that and so I do kind of wish I'd snuck my phone down there, but but I understand the rules of decorum and the, the reason that they chose uh, to do that. So for this particular layout, and because we have four photos, I've decided to do a grid. Now, normally I would do a square grid with this one, which is what I started with in my head, but then I cut my squares slightly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and just decided to embrace it. And so I went with four and a half by four inch squares. Once I had already cut one of the sides to four inches, I realized it was a little shorter than I had intended. And then I went, nah, we're just gonna roll with it. We're just gonna make it work. And I think it actually does work out quite well in the end. It gives the entire layout a slightly off look, which I actually really like. So to get started, I created two borders for this layout. I did a dark navy cardstock border, gutted out the center using my paper trimmer, and then I went in with this beautiful, beautiful multicolored plaid paper. And this one's really, really perfect to use in the background because it has so many colors from the collection itself. And that makes it a great staple piece to kind of tie together multiple colors in the collection. So in this case, my photos do have a lot of colors happening in them, but they're largely neutral colors. So I have some navy, I have black and white, uh, there's a little bit of like a gray in the background. And so the colors matched perfectly with this collection. But in addition to that, there is a few of the brighter colors that this collection doesn't have. And one of the main ones is like a nice light pale blue. And this collection has uh, two shades of blue. It has kind of a periwinkle blue, and then it has this darker, more navy blue. But it doesn't have this like really pale, bright blue. And I am purposefully using a collection that doesn't have that color because it helps my photos to stand out on these patterned papers. So this is a technique that I just refer to as color avoidance. I'm sure there is a really technical name for it, but I just call it color avoidance and I will take a strong color in my photos and just not use it anywhere on the page. And so what this does is it draws your attention directly to the photos because it's the only place on the page where you will see that color. And that little bit of difference or contrast is going to grab your attention and draw you into that area of the layout. Now in my photos, I believe only two of them have that bright blue. And so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that those two photos really take center stage on the layout, and so they are the ones that are going to draw in the majority of your attention. The first one is the one from inside of the arena, and it mostly has like the giant jumbotron in the middle of the arena that has that bright blue. In another photo, it is of my mom and my brother standing with me, and my brother's shirt has that same bright blue. 
Another way that I'm adding a little bit of contrast and interest to this page is by outlining. So I've created a little grid inside of the grid, so a couple lines inside of the grid, as well as outlining each of the squares. Now you also could have backed each of the squares with say some of that navy paper that I used for the border as well, but because two of my squares already were a shade of navy, I didn't really think it was gonna add a whole lot to then use a different shade of navy behind it. Instead, I decided to go ahead and outline, A, it's faster, uh, B, it's just as effective as creating that shadow and the detailing around the photos. So as you can see, the two photos at the top of the page really are what gonna grab your attention color-wise because they have that bright blue, but at the bottom, you have a close-up of my face, which is also gonna grab your attention. So anytime you have a photo that has a more direct or closer version of your subject, that is usually gonna be the photo that grabs your attention first. Because you're getting more detail on the person's face, you're gonna focus on that face. And so by doing that, I'm kind of drawing your eye all the way around the page by making each of the photos stand out a little bit in a different way. Now the bottom left photo has the most people in it, and that's already gonna grab your attention because as a human being, we are drawn to groups of people. Like we just find them interesting. And so it's, I find easier to focus on groups of people in a photo. So you can kind of look at each individual person and uh, see the personalities popping out in that person. Now I will say, <laughs> <laughs> my son in the bottom left photo uh, was not pleased by the time we got to do photos, which was at the end after the ceremony was over, because it was an extremely long ceremony. I was not prepared for the multiple hours of sitting in a folding chair waiting for them to get through all of the names. And they moved really quickly through those names. And my university, very thankfully, separates the graduation by school. So I was in the liberal arts school, which happens to be one of the bigger schools. And so it took multiple hours to get through all of those names, but they did such a great job. I really enjoyed the ceremony. I really enjoyed uh, being on that stage of sorts, because you're really in the bottom of the arena, kind of like where you would play the game. And in this case, I believe it's the basketball arena. And it's so fascinating to me because I've never felt like I wanted to be on display, but being in that room and hearing all of those names called, seeing so many people that had like all of the, the honorable uh, mentions and ropes and cords and things that they wear, it was just so fascinating to me and it was so interesting to see how everyone there was celebrating in different ways, how the families came out for their kids and having my own family out there in the crowd. It was, oh, it was absolutely a dream come true and something that I have been working toward for 20 years. So I was really, really excited this day and there are so many feelings associated with this day. Now you may notice when you get to the end of this video that there are no journaling added to this one. I will be adding a little bit of journaling next to the photo at the bottom right, but uh, my thoughts on it I think are a little bit more private. I have done a more extensive journaling piece on an accompanying page that shows a larger photo of me actually receiving my diploma, my degree, and that particular layout has a lot of journaling. So this is kind of gonna be next to it. And even though the two do complement each other, they use different Cocoa Vanilla collections and don't perfectly match, which is something I do quite often in my two page spreads. Now I'm using a variety of different embellishments on this particular layout because I wanted each of the squares to have a little bit of their own unique personality. So while I've found ways to tie together certain squares, uh, there is, a little element of unique and whimsical vibe to each of them. So I have the banners at the bottom left, I have the frames at the top left, and I have florals at the top right, and the bottom right is the uh, secondary title. So I have a special to me is kind of the main title, and the story behind this photo is the kind of secondary title, even though it's bigger 
special to me is really the title I wanted to focus on. Now I am using these journaling cards to back some of my photos. So one is at the bottom right, that'll be a little bit of journaling there. The other had kind of a nice little title there and I used the outside bit of a frame, it kind of looks like a frame, but I believe it was just the outside bit of an embellishment piece from the Ephemera pack. And I'm using that to kind of frame that little message and give it a little bit more prominence on the page. But one element that I absolutely needed to get onto this page was this little book with the florals coming out of it that's next to the arena. I love this ephemera piece so much. It is my favorite one in the entire collection. And we get a couple of them. I think there's a chipboard version and an ephemera version. And I absolutely love this icon. And so I definitely wanted to get it on the page. And to me, it just screamed graduation or school. And so that is why that piece has such a prominent place on this layout. Now my butterflies kind of soften the linear look of this page, but what will also soften the look is when I come in with some Nouveau drops and dot along those lines that run between the grids. This little tiny detail you wouldn't think makes much difference, but it really does. It makes the entire layout pop and makes every single element stand out just that much more. The varying layers that I've added around my photos also help the photos to stand out, but without drawing too much attention away from them. I'm not covering up so much of my photos that you lose the element of what their intention is, the mood of the day, like you really still have all of that while still having a pretty page. Now I'm not gonna be using these larger foam titles for a big title. I'm just going to grab the little hearts off of it. And I love when Zoe adds these to her collections and I think it makes it so much easier to incorporate those titles as well if you're going to use them on the page. Those little foam shapes can help to spread that color and that material around the page and just helps it fit in a little bit better. But these puffy hearts, they have my heart. I love them. They were a perfect scattering piece to add around the page. I love that there's some circles as well as hearts. And so I can use a little bit of both around the page. And this is my main source of fine detail embellishing that I do at the very end of my layouts. Now, one of the little things I did with these is I added them in color matching tone to the banner. And the banner was a chipboard piece that I trimmed off some of the white edge of, so it wasn't drawing quite so much attention to itself underneath of my photo. And then I've added these little hearts right on top of it. And while it's not a detail that necessarily may catch your attention first thing, in person. It is such a dramatic and uh, a exciting change to that left square, that bottom left square that was fairly simple compared to the others. And I think it really elevated it to match the prominence of the other three. So I wanted to give each of these photos a little bit of a feature in their own spot. Now, as you can see, this Nouveau drop in black going along those lines makes such a huge difference in drawing your attention straight into the center of the layout and you're not getting caught up in the borders around the outside, which my brain was kind of catching and eyes were catching on that border because the plaid is really busy. And I think this really helped to draw my eye in to the photos directly. And I love the finished effect of that. Now, all I had to do was add a little bit more Nouveau on my little butterfly trails. That's kind of a tradition for me. I love making butterfly trails to add some movement to the page. And then I'll come in with some gold ink spray to just splatter around the edges. Now it is important not to get that gold ink spray on your photos as much as possible because it can leave a bit of like an oily residue ring uh, or it cannot come off. One of the two. But that's about it for this one guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. I had so much fun scrapping these photos and reliving these memories. But until next time, bye y'all.